Hello children, nice to see you all again. How are you all? Wonderful, great. So are you ready for today's class? Because we have another story. Are you excited? As usual, right? <laughs> okay, let's begin. The name of today's story is The Ground is Moving. Ah, how can the ground move, right? Hmm. But for that, we need to check what's in the story. So let's begin. And remember, as usual, I will ask you questions and whoever answers questions, they get some good stickers and some good adjectives. So I hope you all are ready. Let's begin. I'm going to read this for you. So let's listen. It was September and the first day of the new school year. Sam and Emily couldn't wait to get back into the classroom after the long summer break. Wow! It's like you have a long summer break and you are eagerly waiting to meet your friends after that long gap. Okay, they were especially excited for geography with Mr. Hodgson, their favorite teacher. So do you have somebody like that in your school, like your favorite teacher? Oh yes, which subject? Social, English, great. So Sam and Emily were excited too, let's see. As the school bell rang through the halls, the class took their seats, finished their conversations and waited for Mr. Hodson to begin. Mm. Good morning, class, said Mr. Hodson. Good morning, sir, echoed the class in unison. Echoed is like, you know, you hear the sound again and unison is like in unity. It means all the students wished. Mr. Hodson, good morning. My, my, Mr. Hodson said playfully. You've all grown so much over the summer holidays. So why did Mr. Hodgson say, my, my? Because he saw that they all grew. He could notice some change in all the students. I can barely recognize you. Oh, hmm. Mr. Hodgson found it difficult to recognize them. Okay. Sam, Emily and their classmates looked around them and sure enough they noticed that some things were different. Even Sam had grown one inch taller and Emily's hair was two inches longer. Wow! My God, the kids are growing up so fast. Hmm. Time to answer the questions. Let's see the first question and let's see who is going to answer the first question. Here we go. What is your favorite lesson at school? Maths. English. Music class. <laughs> So we all have our favorite subjects and I'm sure we all have our favorite teachers too. Ah, good. Next question. How do you change over the summer holidays? Like we just saw that, you know, uh, Emily's hair grew long and Sam grew one inch taller. So what changes do you observe during that long gap of holidays? Can you tell me? Yes. You become tanned? But why? Oh, you go on vacation with your family and on trips. So you go to the beach and maybe you could get tanned. Yeah, during the summer, if you go out and spend too much of time, you get tanned. <laughs> Good example. So you get an adjective from my side. 
What adjective are you going to get this time? Let's check. Here we go. You are amazing. Okay. <laughs> now, let's move on to the next part of the story. Let's see what's going to happen in the class. Okay, I'm going to read this out. Of course, said Mr. Hodson. It's good and normal for things to change. In the natural world, things are transforming all the time. Can anyone give me an example? Sam's hand promptly shot up. So Mr. Hodson says that it's natural that things are transforming all the time. And he's asking for an example. So Sam's hand promptly shot up. What do you mean by promptly? Quickly, quickly. It's like as if he was waiting to answer. Every season, the leaves on the trees change, he exclaimed. In spring, they grow green, and then in autumn, they change to red, orange, yellow, and brown. That's an excellent example, assured Mr. Hodson. Wow, what an example Sam has given, right? We know how the leaves change, right? Especially how it becomes in autumn and how is it in spring? Very good. Let's see. Next, up came Emily's hand, more hesitant than her friend Sam had been. More hesitant? It was like she was not that confident. If you are hesitant, that means you're not confident. Sometimes you do this, right? Like when you want to give an example in the class or ask a question, you're like being hesitant. Should I ask or not? Mm. Butterflies are born caterpillars. They make themselves a cocoon where they grow their beautiful wings and emerge all brightly colored. Hey, we saw this in the previous lesson. We learned that how a caterpillar changes and transforms into a butterfly. Another good example by Emily. Wow. Okay. Another excellent example exclaimed Mr. Hodson. But, said Emily, furrowing her brow like this, in thought, some things in nature don't change. Why did she say this? Some things in nature don't change. The mountains and the valleys, the ground that we stand on, these things all stay the same. Hey, she says mountains, valleys, and the ground that we stand on, they don't change. Let's answer the questions. Can you think of another example of something which changes in nature? I need an answer. Who could answer? Yes, you can answer. Sky, how does it change? Oh yes, it is sometimes very clear and sunny and sometimes it is cloudy. Sometimes it's dark. Very good example. We can see the different shades and colors in the sky, right? depending on each season. Very good example. Next question. Do you agree with Emily that some things don't change? Yes, you tell me. Mountains don't change. But if we destroy them, then they change. Oh yes, that's a good example. Naturally, they don't change. Um, what else? She also said, the ground that we stand on stays the same. Do you agree? Do you think the ground stays the same? Because the name of the lesson is the ground is moving. Let's check. We need to check what's going to happen. Let's, let's move on. It's interesting that you say that Emily said Mr. Hodson. In fact, he continued, the earth's surface is moving all the time, but it happens so slowly that we hardly notice it. So Mr. Hodgson says that the earth is moving, 
but we don't notice it because it's so slow. Sam, Emily and their classmates looked at the ground below them in surprise. They were like, hey, is it moving? I can't see it moving, protested Sam. To understand what is happening, we have to look far below our feet, said Mr. Hodson, pointing to a diagram on the board. So Mr. Hodson says, just by looking at the ground, you cannot decide whether it's moving or not. And then he's going to explain something to us. He's showing us a diagram on the board. Let's listen and watch carefully what Mr. Hodson is about to say. The earth is made up of three layers. How many layers? Three. The middle is called the core. It's like the center point is called the core. It is a hot, dense ball around 5200 degrees Celsius. Oh my goodness, I can't even imagine that because when the temperature goes 40 degrees Celsius, we are like, hey, no. I can't take the scorching heat in the summer. We all do that, right? 40 degrees. And he's talking about 5,200 degrees Celsius. Oof. Wow, interrupted Emily. You wouldn't want to find yourself there. Never. I, I, can, I can never imagine me in such a place. No, can't even imagine that. It's already burning. <laughs> okay. Let's move on and see what are the questions. Oh, we've got something more to cover. Around the core is the mantle. So we have the core, which is the middle, the center point. Around the core is the mantle, continued Mr. Hudson. This is a layer of half solid, half liquid rock. So this rock is actually half solid and half liquid. So interesting, right? Hmm, nature is really interesting. Molten lava. Sam shouted out excitedly. Molten lava. Hmm. On top of the mantle, there is the earth's crust. Mr. Hudson resumed. This is the solid ground we stand on. Oh my goodness, look at these parts. We have the core and then around the core we have the mantle and then on the top we have the crust and that's where we all stand on wow this is really interesting don't you think so children let's see what are the questions without looking at the text can you describe the three layers of the earth who's gonna do that yes you Core, which is the middle part, okay. Around the core, you have mantle, okay. And then on the top, you have the crust. Good job. You deserve an adjective. Let me see what adjective can I give you this time. And you are going to get fantastic. Yay. Okay. Now, let's see what Hudson is about to tell us all.